it should be like very possible to add at some point many, many, many AIs because this is intrinsically an, an exponential process. But when you are able to, to competently do this operation one time, you can do it two times, four, eight, 16, and then you double and double and double. And this is basically uh, like a pandemic. If this happens in the wild, it's not clear to me that we would be able to stop this pandemic. Humans are going to help the AI to autonomously replicate. And uh, after some time, uh, the AI is going to be able to, like the next generation is going to be able to do this autonomously and to adapt. I think most people don't think that autonomous replication is an existential risk. And I think that I agree. I don't think this is an existential risk. But I think we should consider this as one of the very few warning shots that is going to be very clear. I, I hear you saying that it's not an existential risk in itself. On the road to existential risk, right? If we have 8 billion humans and let's say six months from now, there are 80 billion or 800 billion of these systems, at some point does the sheer mass of them become an existential threat unto itself. Like, you understand what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So this is what, uh, yeah. So Holden Karnowski talks about, you might think, for example, uh, yeah, even if AI is not super intelligent, even if it's like roughly at the same level of intelligence as human or a yeah. bit below, if it's very, very numerous, it might be able to coordinate and to do wild stuff. A warning shot and the possibility or or maybe the reality that a warning shot won't be understood by the public that maybe we've already had warning shots that could have been big deals but weren't and so because the journalists and because the public don't know where these lines are every time we cross them nobody knows so so talk about um the importance of a warning shot and also the importance of on people understanding that a warning shot just happened and the danger of it happening and them not. Yeah, I, exactly. I think warning shot is mostly a social construct. Uh, so, and I think this is very, very important. Uh, for example, being shot, most people don't know about, like, don't know that when being shot was released, it was blatantly misaligned. Uh, but if the AI safety community was able to like explain this much more to people uh, in different countries, we could have transformed this occasion into a warning shot. Warning shot needs a lot of, uh, like, like if you want to create a warning shot, you need to talk to the journalist. You need to explain this to like to different new paper because otherwise uh, people just don't know what is happening in France. People don't know about being chat. Like most people don't know what is happening. And yeah. this is why we need some kind of, uh, yeah, advocacy. And yeah. Yeah. And I mean, there could have been many, right? Like, for example, um, OpenAI, the company most likely to lead us to the technology that could end all life on Earth. They admit they can't control their technology. They admit they don't understand their technology. And then they told everyone, that's okay because we have this super alignment team and in four years, they're going to solve it all and everything's going to be fine. So don't yeah. worry about the fact that we're making something that could kill us all. We can't control. We don't understand. These guys are going to fix it. And then poof, in like two weeks, the whole super alignment team resigns, says we don't believe things are safe enough. And the whole world acts like, oh, this is people moving around on LinkedIn. Like somebody left, you know, uh, uh, Jan yeah. Leike left OpenAI to go to Anthropic. What an interesting corporate move. Like, no, like maybe that, maybe the super alignment team all quitting was the warning shot and nobody heard it. Yeah, 